Hello, welcome to my 3D Amnesty channel. Um, this is Cypher Pro video series. In this video, we're going to learn how to import maps from Substance Painter and create trader in a Redshift. And we're going to create a final image through a Redshift renderer. Let's get started. So I have this Maya file open here, as you could see. So I'm going to uh, minimize my appreciate window. Uh, make sure you have a basic knowledge in Maya to understand this tutorial. And I'm just being cautious about it because um, I'm going uh, some other concept I'm going to cover, you need at least a beginner knowledge of it. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, what I did here is I have a floor. So I'm going to open my outliner and I make sure I'm plugged in the next window. So I'm going to I have a floor. So the floor is nothing but I created like a bunch of um, like a sci-fi details and I placed my grenade on it. I want like some kind of platform sitting on it. Um, so for this one, what I did is I literally went to assign brushed metal mat so as a new material and type redshift material so the good thing about redshift is a real-time renderer and it helps you to give to see the result faster as you create materials so what i did was i went here and i said um aluminum and and i plugged in a map in the reflect reflectivity uh, channel so let's go and see the brush material brush metal so what i did i plugged in a map in my roughness material and i put a, a remap on it and i created it so i'm going to hide this the anterior grenade so i also have a dome light so how i create my dome redshift go to lights and i create a dome light it's exactly like v-ray but it's a little bit faster um, so in this v-ray dome light I plugged in a HDRI. Let's see if I have a thumbnail for it. So it's in this low. So this is, uh, you could see here. So this is um, the HDRI I have. So our material sitting somewhere here. So this is HDRI I plugged in. So now if I go to Redshift, make sure you go to Redshift Render View. And if I hit, play it's a progressive renderer you could see it's a literally calculating the render so i could rotate it and it updates it i'm not sure you can see in the screen okay so i i have the lock camera that's why it's not doing it so now if you see it's literally um rendering really fast so you could see some kind of output with samples in it so if you let it go it renders um whatever render settings you have in here so you can see this is my floor and i'm just going to stop it this is the progressive render and if you click on this one it's going to render it and this is faster too and i also have my gi on global illumination so it goes really faster too and i have the lower sampler settings for the demo purpose or else i will have my samples higher and i will have a cleaner renderer so it's 80 percent done so i'm going to cancel it so boom it's right there and it's hd 520 so now i'm going to bring back my grenade uh, really okay, it's right here so these are like literally copies i'm going to delete that and so here let's go to the shading so since we have all the grenade in um one item if you go to my uv editor you can see everything is in one item so it's literally we can plug the maps from uh, substance painter and create the shading and i also have glass as a separate mesh so I'm going to add that. So what I did here, I also added some more geo in my inside this inside my grenade. I want to show you guys what I did. It's nothing because at inside it feels really empty. So I want to make sure I added something. So it's literally nothing, but it's kind of like a bunch of cylinders, and the cylinders kind of like add like different kind of materials towards it. So this material is a silver material. So what I did here is I literally went to custom 
and I said silver and it created silver material for this one what I did I did gold you could see the preset gold is there and this one I did um, rubber so because it has three distinction tutorials uh, three distinctive materials and I also added a portal light I'll show the portal light where's the portal light so I also added like an area light inside because I want to see these materials because it's kind of really empty for the glass what I did I went here and I created a glass material from here and I plugged in a map from a reflection and a refraction and and I plugged in a remap node into it that's it so it's nothing fancy you just play with it until you get a desired result uh, for the glass I could show the map I using uh, a reflection For glass material, I'm going to hopefully we could see it here. If not, I'm going to show it here. I just want to show the map of what I painted the scratches, glass scratches. So there you go. So this is the scratches I painted in my glass. So I use this map as my reflection as well as my uh, refraction too. So from that point I added a remap node by going in here click on the node and I go to FX and insert a color remap then I played with my you know black and white value to get the desired result so that's it uh, it's nothing fancy for this one I created only one shader since we have everything in one item so I'm going to maximize this so literally what I did here is <coughs> I plugged in my diffuse map and make sure it's an sRGB and make sure it's in Udemari because if it's off it's not going to plug in all the maps it's going to plug in the 101 map so if you say Udemari it's going to create all the maps um, for roughness I did the same thing and I also created a remap node to get the desired result because I don't want to be super reflective I want my reflection to be super subtle for the reflection map, I plugged it into my reflection color and the weight I kept it to 1. For roughness, I plugged it into my roughness map and I said 0.17. You could, um, in Redshift, your sample should be higher to get a really good result. For the IOR, I kept it at 1.5. The more you increase, the more metallic your material is going to look like. So 1.5 is a good start for a metal, so I kept it at that. Uh, for a bump map, what I did was... I'll show you what I did for the bump map. But I created a bump map only for my first uh, let's see where I can from a decals map. I'm just gonna see my bump map where I look at it. It's a new maps decals. So I'm going to grenade decals. So you could see it's a black and white map. I'm just going through all the maps from first udem to fifth udem for the second udem i don't have any decal so that's why it's showing a small tiny map but whereas you can see the first udem you can see it so i just created my uh, decals for this green diffuse i didn't create a bump for another channels uh, for other uh, color schemes so i plugged in my uh, bump map and you plug it in here overall if you go to overall you could see bump map you can literally plug in there so it gives the values and it's kind of going in I want to go out so I put minus 2 on it or you could invert the map either way it works um, so nothing fancy uh, material it's just straightforward like VA so once I have that I create a shot cam and I just locked it and I went to redshift And it's just a progressive render. So first, it's going to take some time to get used to the the materials and everything. After it's going to pop out here. So there, there you go. So you can literally see everything is popping out. Even the materials inside, it's popping out too. Um, so I'm going to get rid of the camera, and I'm going to go in the perspective view. See, it will update in a second. There you go.
so you can literally zoom in and look at the materials and everything and even the portal light we put inside kind of working you know it's kind of like showing all these materials we could make it brighter if you want let's see what we get if we increase the intensity so we have 20 you could see we could see more things happening inside so if we put 100 if you can see you know reflection is i i inside so i'm going to say to 20 that worked really fine So there you go. So it, that's it's that faster. So I'm just going to render out a frame so you guys can see it. And this render is really fast and it's really easy to learn. I will recommend if you guys have a chance go and watch in um, other video channels. I learned it through YouTube. There are like really good channels you guys can watch it. Um, I. Let's see if I can find the tutorial I watched on YouTube and post it in this video in the description below. Uh, let's see if I can find it because they provided the scene files and everything so you can just play with it. Um, I also going to give all the files for you guys um, as OBJ so you guys can uh, as well as the maps and everything. So you guys can download everything and play with it and see if you get the desired result what I'm getting. I don't want to give my Maya file because I want you guys to learn when you guys are watching this tutorial. That's the main reason I don't give my Maya files to my students. So it's better to download the files. Then you do the same thing what I'm doing here. So you just learn as well. Because I used to do that uh, mistake too. So I watch a lot of tutorials but I don't do it but I just see it. So if you don't do it, you don't get the answer on experience. So that's it. So now from here, so from substance, what I did once we replace the diffuse map. Okay, so the other thing um, I did here is I just want to make sure um, the metallic map we ex uh, we um, exported from substance is used in the blend material because what happens is. Um, once you plug in all the maps, the metal doesn't show up in the redshift renderer. So what I did, I I just played around it. So what I did was, so I used a blend material. So I used my metallic map as a mask and I plugged it in my blend color. So it's kind of, I'm using a metal material. So if he's, so I'm just going to assign this metal material to just the top part. So you guys can see what does it look like so i'm just going to play so you can see the metal material it's kind of super reflective so what i did i applied for everything and i took the metal map and i just used it as a mask so you can see the metal right in there um, so i'm going to maximize so you guys can see it so this is my metal material so you could also create metal by going through silver or platinum and you play with it until you get something. Then I used a uh, metallic map as my uh, mask. So let me open my, um, hopefully I could open it, metal. You guys can, see, since the EXR we can see it here. So I'm going to open it in Photoshop so you guys can see it. How it looks like, it's like literally a black and white map. I'm going to try transparency, so you can see so the white going to be metal parts and the black going to be not going to be metal. So these are all metal materials. Uh, let's open 002 metal. So the 002 doesn't have anything. Let's see if you have three something. Yeah, there you go. So this white things are going to be metal and the black things going to be masked away. So this whole thing is metal. This is the part where you could see this one. I'm going to show you so this part at the bottom so that's the idea behind it um, so that's why I created because make sure you have uh, blend material separately because or else you can see the metallic map on it um, so in order to change the diffuse map what I did I literally went to my grenade material I went to my color 
So I exported the diffuse in a separate diffuse two and diffuse three. So I'm gonna plug in my diffuse three and open it. So it's gonna plug in everything since it's a UDM. So it's going to plug in all my maps and all the UDMs. So I don't have to worry about anything. The only thing I have to worry about it because since I don't have a bump map, I didn't create the bump map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overall bump map. Go to bump map and put it to zero. You don't have to do anything, put it to zero. So now if I go here, you'll see the magic. Bingo. So I have the diffuse map here now. So I don't have to do anything else. That's it, we are done. So we did uh, three color schemes. Then you can um, take this renderer to Photoshop and paint it on and send it to your art director. Or you can use this as a concepting stage and you made like a lot of variations. Um, so meanwhile, while this rendering is going on, I'm going to change the maps to the second one. You're gonna see the magic now. Bingo, right there. So I literally changed the map, it's right there. So the orange one. I really like the white one because it uh, fits the sci-fi criteria, but I'm going to have all the renders so you guys can see it. And I also give this model on the map so you guys can play with it as well. Um, so I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna just render it to see how it looks like. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the final renders of what I did. Since it's rendering, it's really that fast, guys. So, so I recommend you know learning this uh, render as well. It's really fast in like doing concepting stage, or if you want to use for a demo reel, you could use this as well. And a lot of studios um, using this Redshift render nowadays. So bingo, it's 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 really fast. So what I did uh, for my file render is I copied this three times and I played with it. So you could see. So this is the first renderer with the grenade model. But you could see um, I had some maps in it, and this is kind of looks sci-fi. And for some reason, the render I rendered out in a low res, and this is high res too. So you could see it. Um, it it came out pretty good, guys. So I really liked it. So there you go. So I would recommend uh, you guys play with it as well. I'll give the files and everything through a Dropbox links, and let me know what you guys think about the tutorial and what you guys want to learn. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and uh, keep watching this uh, channel, guys. And I'm keep on giving a lot of information to you guys. And uh, until then, you guys have a great day.